You read Welby? Yes, ma'am. How may I help you? I hear those three billboards out on Drinkwater Road. Here's 5000 for the first month, and here's what the billboards ought to say. I guess you're Angela Hayes' mother. That's right. I'm Angela Hayes' mother. I absolutely loved the film. Oh, I, thank you. Like, blown away. But um, now, it's set in small town America. You come from two Irish parents. You grew up in England. Where did the fascination with America come from? Um, originally probably from the movies, mm -hmm. like it has for, for most of us from from this side of the water. Um, like American movies of the 1970s were my, my big kind of love, like Badlands and all of the De Niro Scorsese things and uh, uh, millions and millions. Um, but also like having done the plays and gone to New York, I, I took time to travel around the States around those times. And um, But I liked going to obscure obscure places like Missouri and Georgia and, and uh, New Mexico and, and Colorado and seeing, you know, little towns and listening to people. And and I think that's what kind of prompted a story like this is, is just being, kind of being truthful to to real people in, in small town America without judgment or sentimentalizing them. So Mildred Hayes, why did you put up these billboards? My daughter Angela was murdered seven months ago. It seems to me the police department is too busy torturing black folks to solve actual crime. Hey you, what is this? Advertising, I guess. Advertising what? Something obscure? And you have a few actors that you work with again and again. What is it about Sam Rockwell, Woody Harrelson, and even Colin Farrell that you kind of gravitate towards them? They're all really nice. Um, most of them like a drink, and um, uh, they're just brilliant. You know, they're just the best actors of of, of their generations, really. Um, uh, but it's also the reason you keep going back to them as well is this: they're nice people. It's great to go to work, knowing that everyone's going to do a good job, but you're going to have fun doing it too. Um, even like a lot of the smaller parts uh, are people I've worked with before mm -hmm. uh, too. So, um, and I kind of like that. And I hope Francis will do something in, in, in one of the next ones as well. Um, but there's a, there's, a, there's, a, there's a joy in working with friends, you know. Mm. The town is dead set against these billboards. Took a poll, did you, Father? And speaking of Frances, um, I can't imagine anyone else playing Mildred. Did you write the part for her? I did, and that's my line. I can't imagine anyone else do. Uh, it was written for her. There's, there's, she had to be someone who had a complete integrity but, um, and, a, and, a, and a drive and an anger. Um, or could play all those things. One thing that was very important to Frances and I was was not showing the soft side of her, mm. you know, not saying, yes, she's doing this, but she's actually a really nice person, actually cutting that bit out of it completely. Because you know she, you know she's, there's a de decency to her or she wouldn't be doing what she's doing. But we didn't want to over-egg that. We didn't want to almost let the, the audience off the hook with that. You know who threw that can? What can? How about you, sweetheart? I love your movies through the dark humour, but there's great emotion here too, especially with one scene with Woody Harrelson. I don't want to give anything away. Good. But is it hard to kind of get that balance in the script? Um, I, I, even my plays have always been that way too, mm -hmm. and, and in Bruges was, was certainly that way too. It's just the natural way I, I see stories, I think, and, and see dialogue and uh, maybe even see the world. You know, you see the, the darker stuff and the sadder stuff, but you don't want to let yourself be dragged down by it, so you kind of see the humour in, in all situations almost. Um, and that's one of the things I like about this is that it, it sort of starts off from a, from a sad, sad place. But it doesn't dwell in that, in that place the whole time. You know, there are, there are laughs in this as, as big as in any kind of big comedy, I think. But it goes back and forth. Sometimes in, in, a, in the middle of a scene, it goes back and forth from comedy to, to tragedy. Um, and there's something kind of exciting and joyful about that, I think. And I think that's what audiences seem to be taking from it so far. And um, the film kind of touches on things like police brutality and racism without ever being about those things. Do you think it's important to include them in the conversation of the film? I think so, yeah. It's not a film that's completely about that or directly about that. But if it's a story about a, a woman who's, uh, you know, angry with her local police force in one of the southern states of America right now, or, you know, in the last couple of years, that is going to be one of... Uh, um, the strings in her bow, or one, one of the things she's going to call out is, is that tendency in certain cops in certain regions like this. So, so it was important to, uh, to touch on it and to be um, honest and truthful about it, uh, truthful as I see it anyway, um, but without it being the, entire, the entirety of the story, because basically I think you, if, if, if that's going to be the story, you should focus on it completely. Mm -hmm. And this was about focusing on a mother and her pain and her 
drive, I guess. And finally, what are you going to be doing next? Will it be a play or another film? Um, I wrote a play this year, so I think I'm going to get that on in London next year. Um, and I want to write a couple of uh, a couple of uh, films and sort of pick what the next one is going to be. I'm not sure what the next film will be, but I don't want it to be less good than this. So, so it might take a bit of work. <laughs> Thank you so much for your time today. Thanks, Thank you. All this anger, man, just begets greater anger. This time, the chick ain't losing. <laughs>